Morning guys, Tammy Trier, TrierWilderness.com. I'm back on this morning. Yesterday I spoke about wildfire preparedness and I want to get back on today and let's explore this a little bit further um, because I know there's many out there, you know, that wouldn't necessarily know what to take and I want to cover this and I'm sure that there's things I'm going to miss but I want to cover because there's so much um, and I know our minds work so differently than other people's. So, um, for example, our survival packs that we would carry and grab would have enough in there for us to survive in the wild because of our knowledge, because of knowing how to utilize um, what's available in nature to survive. So that plays a huge role um, because we could get away with so much less. However, we also have the mindset to think of all the things that we would need. And for us, like I said, we packed our trailers knowing that we would need to probably set up camp and rebuild from the ground up. So um, we have all of our tools, we have um, our food supply, we have our generator, we have everything that we would need to exist, you know, without your modern day conveniences, but with what we would need to survive to rebuild. And quite honestly, the more we live this lifestyle, the less we need. But nevertheless, I want you to be prepared and I want you to consider all the things you're going to need. For starters, I mentioned yesterday about your important documents. You know, those are your life insurance policies, your all those important documents that you have in a fire safe. Pick them up and go. You need them. You have to have them and it, don't forget them. The other thing is if you're, you have medications that you're taking all the time, you can't forget them. Especially some of you, you may need them as a you know, something to, uh, keep you existing. So, you know, your blood pressure medication, your heart pills, whatever they are, you know, don't leave them behind. That's, that's critical. So make sure you have your medications, your food, water, you know, your food and water are huge, huge, huge. You know, you don't, we don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know where you're going to end up, you know, so you've got to think out of the box. Think about, continuing to exist until this is resolved. So food, water, clothing, you know, um, five, seven days worth of clothes, whatever. And, and, you know, you, you don't need to get crazy. You don't need a huge suitcase. I mean, for us, we put them in our, you know, rolled them up and threw them in our rucksack, jeans and a t-shirt and extra shoes. You know, we have our boots. Um, I've actually packed my Keens, which are uh, a sandal. I use them to jog. I use them to hike in, but they're also usable in the water. That way, if we have to, you know, hit the river or whatever, you know, I have something that's not going to, you know, make my boots wet that I'm, so, so think out of the box. Think about what you're going to need and having extra shoes is important. Um, something else while you're preparing, this is what we did. Um, while we know there's fires, we started creating lists. We created a list of if we need to get out fast, you know, this is before we started heavily packing things because we have, my house looks like we just moved in. It's really ridiculous, but we're prepared. Um, but we made a list, a list of things that we would grab if we were forced out of here and, and had no time to think about it. The other list was what we would take for long-term survival to rebuild and start over. So create that list. The other thing is, where would you go? You know, um, when you're evacuated, most cases are you're gonna need to go and report in somewhere that you have evacuated the area so they have an account, they know you're out. And then from there, where will you go? We have friends that are at a far enough distance, we've made plans with them that if things happen, we're gonna pull out, head there, set up, tent there till we can come back in type of thing. The other thing is, this is really important too, because this was a concern for us. Um, the mountain man's been traveling out daily, maybe two, three times, you know, three times a week, maybe, you know, it depends, but he's traveling out. I had some errands to run. I would have had to leave. It's a, it, it's a nerving feeling when you have this going on and you still have to continue going at your, um, normal day to day life. Therefore, you've got to have plans. So if we're all out and something happens, you know, where are we going to meet? Where are we going to connect? 
and, and, and giving your children instructions. You know, we, I had to leave, the mountain man had to leave and the mountain boys left behind. Not a good feeling. Um, not a comforting feeling, but what are you going to do? So if something happens and uh, you know, this is what you're going to do. This is where we're going to meet. This is where you're going to get in that car, get the dogs and get, you know, so you have that plan, you have it laid out. Um, if plan A doesn't work because there's fire there, what's your plan B? We have that lined up too. You got to be prepared. You really got to think about these things and, and really have your bases covered. Um, I know that although the mountain man is out, he does get comfort in knowing that he and I are on the same page and that we've got a plan. You know, I could imagine what it would feel like if we didn't have a plan. We're just, we're just that way. So I'm encouraging you, if you're not that way, to please be that way. Um, take these things into consideration, okay? So something else we grab is obviously our survival pack. Now, if many of you that are following us, you should know that we carry knives, paracord. I have a paracord bracelet on all the time. Knives, lighter. My, my pistol is always on me. I have, we have essentials on our person all the time. The other thing is to... Um, grab your survival pack because for food you're going to need to cook it. So in our survival pack we have our um, needs in there to cook our food, heat our water. Something else I want to make sure that you have is a wide mouth stainless steel water bottle. If you don't they will be for sale on our website in the next week or so. Um, it's a necessity to have something like that. Stainless steel can be thrown in a fire or put in a fire and used to heat your water. Wide mouth enables you to cook your food within the same container because you can easily get in and out of it. So that is a huge tool. If for some reason you're forced out, you don't have your pack, you don't have your equipment, a, a water bottle like that is huge. Mine has a top that you can put a clip on it. I actually have a paracord bracelet attached to mine so that I can attach it to my hip and go or onto my belt. So, or my pack, whatever. But that's really something important that you should carry all the time anyway. Water is huge. You need to be hydrated. Um, with the heat, the way it has been this summer, we have been drinking like fish. So, you know, think of these things, okay? The other thing is a first aid kit. First aid kit, your sleeping bags, a tent, wool blankets. Wool blankets will repel water. They will keep you uh, dry. They will keep you warm. Um, the other thing is if you don't have a sleeping bag, grab a tarp. Uh, Something else we have is reusable space blankets. They are absolutely amazing. We also have the non-reusable ones that we carry in our back pockets because you never know when you might need them. They're extremely handy. They are reflective. So if you're in a situation that you only have a tarp and it gets cool, this morning it was 41 degrees here. This afternoon it'll be in the 90s. So weather conditions are sporadic and you need to cover those bases. If you have to get wet, you need to have dry clothing. So keep these things in mind. If you do not have the uh, accommodations like we do with the trucks or the trailers and you're just throwing stuff in a car, you know, make sure you have some tools, a, um, a chainsaw. You know, one of the things you can do also at your property, and we will do here before we leave, is um, to fell some of the trees. You can fell the trees away from your home and build a line where the fire will not necessarily go past or it'll slow it down. Um, so to preserve your home if you can, but don't stick around, you know, if the, don't mess around, um, down in Kamaya, men got stuck in the fire and uh, because the winds changed. So you just don't know. So don't mess around your house. Uh, you know, like I said yesterday, the things that were important before these fires are no longer important to us. Now our house is a labor of love. We built it ourselves and as much as it means something to us, it's not worth anything compared to my family. So be smart and, and think about, you know, put, put priorities on what's most important here and think about those things. I just want to look at my list here and see. Um, we carry our firearms. Make sure you have guns, ammunition. Um, for us, that's important because there's a possibility we may need to live off the land. So therefore, we need meat. Um, the mountain man had snare. We have everything we need. But, you know, he's packing snares. He's packing ways for us to attain food. You know, so there's a lot of things that you can pack if you have the time. But if you don't have the time, these would be the essentials. Um, the chainsaw, um, digging bar, shovel, axe, pick. 
those kind of tools could be really important if you're getting out and you have to take some kind of alternative route and you run into trouble on the road, a uh, fallen tree, whatever, so that you're able to get out. Um, you just don't know. And that would be the worst thing to see you trying to get out of your home, have a fallen tree in front of you, and there you are stuck. So think of these things. These are conditions where anything goes and, you know, you don't know. So, and like I said yesterday, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but it scares the pants off of me knowing that people don't think of these things and they're not prepared at all and they're not staying alert and on top of things. Like I said, we don't go out much, but I'll be darned if I'm not going to know what's going on around me. So, you know, please don't don't sit in your home and think you're unaffected. And um, also, you know, something else you might consider doing, check in with your local fire department and your local um, Department of Lands, whatever it is in your area. Um, these firefighters need things. Right now, our firefighters are in need of Gatorade, something so simple as to drop off a case of Gatorade to help these guys. I mean, these guys are putting it all out there. There are firefighters coming in from Australia, Alaska, all over the place, and it's just amazing. Um, military's getting involved. They're recruiting people that are wanting to help. These fires are bad, and it's 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 a big concern, so don't disregard this. So, if again, if you are in a state that has um, fires, please, please, please check with your local officials and find out how you can keep yourself informed, whether it be the internet, a phone call, watch the news. We don't have TV, so we need to take other means. It, um, find out the phone numbers for to, to check for evacuations. Like I said yesterday, um, Idaho has put out um, the ability to text message and provide your zip code and they will um, let you know if there's evacuations in your area. So please, please be taking care of your family. And um, the other thing that we struggle with is we do have farm animals. We have chickens and we have the milk goats. And I have my honeybees, which would, all of which would just devastate me to have to leave behind. But my family is most important. So with your animals, if you are unable to take them um, and you don't have a means to take them, like for us, we could throw the goats in um, big Rubbermaid trash cans put the lid on, strap them fast, and put them in the back of the trailer. So there are means of getting some of them out. Um, but you may not have time. So you got so you got to consider all these things. There's ways to take them if you can. If you can't, free them and let them go so that they can at least have a chance to escape. Um, it's a sad thing if that's what has to happen. But please don't risk your life for your animals and your home. So... Um, I'm sure there's other things right now. Those are the things that are on the top of my mind, but I, I just realized so many people leave like our car is packed all the time with extra food, blankets, firearm, whatever. We have everything we need in our vehicle at all times. There is always a chainsaw in our truck. There is always an ax and a digging bar and all those things are in our truck all the time. Come alongs. That's something else to keep in mind. Come alongs, chains, ropes, um, Mule tape, all that kind of stuff. Paracord, make sure you have paracord. I have nine feet on me at all times, but paracord can be used to strap down your, your tent to do all kinds of things, to create a bow in the wild so you can hunt. Have have the essentials and make and, and make sure you are prepared. I also have natural health things with me. I have a lot of my herbs packed. They're small, lightweight. I have all my essential oils packed. That stuff is... Um, something that will keep you going too if you get injured. So, you know, think of all these things that you're going to need and make sure you have them. The Xbox 360, the um, all those things are totally unimportant when it really comes down to it. You've got to think about what you need to survive, not your essential. Your your um, You need your essentials, not your, your play toys. And I don't mean that to be rude or cruel, but it's a reality. Think about what you need and think about what's going to get you by. So this is wildfire preparedness number two. I may come up with a number three. I really want to make sure people are prepared and that you're thinking. So stay safe, stay alert, stay knowledgeable, and be prepared. And just thanks so much for following us um, to our next videos, which there are many. We're just really, really crazy and really, really busy here. But there's more coming your way and a lot of good things. So stay, stay safe, folks, okay? God bless.